Hello, welcome to Santa Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of The Bloodless Princes by Charlotte Bond. This is a book coming out October 29th, 2024 from Tor.com. It is a fantasy novella. I initially received this ER from NetGalley Exchange for a fair review, but then I won a sweet stace on Instagram and got a physical copy. So thank you so much to Tor.com. <laughs> An adventurous continuation of the Fireborn Blade, this novella expands on the magic of that world, and it's very, very fun. <laughs> what is it about? It seemed the afterlife was bustling. Cursed by the previous practitioner in her new role and following an incident with the supremely powerful dragon, High Mage Seraline visits the afterlife with a boon to beg of the bloodless princes who run the underworld. But Seraline and her most trusted advisor, champion, companion, Sir Baddeley, will soon discover that there's only so much research to be done by studying the old tales, though perhaps there's enough truth in them to make a start. Seraline will need more than just her wits to leave the underworld alive, and Madeley will need more than just her fireborn blade. Yeah. I really enjoyed the Fireborn Blade when I read it back in like April uh, or sometime May, I don't know. And this book is equally enjoyable. Like the last time, the main story is interspersed with excerpts from books of the world with explanations as to myths or dragons. I really liked that. I found it immersive. I kind of liked that kind of found text kind of feel to it. The theme of this book is how myths like history are often altered or adapted to suit who is telling them. This book has a the world has a misconception about the nature of dragons and magic, which in turn influences how people act in the book. This is a book about people learning to overcome those misconceptions, which I thought was a nice, a nice idea. <laughs> it was also cool to kind of see how, it was also kind of cool because this book has kind of a, has a, a long kind of history to it, uh, how people's ideas about things did change over time. I thought that was really interesting to kind of show kind of how word of mouth or just like how people's how people tell stories impacted kind of how the, the relationships that people had with other people in the world, uh, not just people, but people and dragons and dra etc. like that. I thought that was really interesting. We don't get a ton of time in the above world proper, as most of this book takes place in the underworld, which is a really interesting world building. I don't want to get into it too much because of spoilers, but the title of the book has to do with the underworld rulers and not the main characters, though I think the blurb did say that. But anyway, that I thought that was really interesting because when I first saw, you know, the cover, I thought it was talking about them, but it's not. These ladies. Uh, also, these covers are so pretty. I love these covers. They're so, like, detailed. They're beautiful. Uh, the story moves fast and has some really cool concepts and a new character that was definitely my favorite. I won't say anything except that I loved their snarkiness and I loved... Okay, I'll give you a hint. They're on the cover and they're not one of the two ladies. <laughs> There was so much about this book that I really, really liked. <laughs> I will say, though, the book does suffer a little bit from what I call novella syndrome. It feels a bit too short. I didn't even need it to be like a full novel, but this thing is only 160 pages, where another 40 pages or even 100 pages would have been fine by me. Like 260 is still a reasonable novella. While the world building was great, certain at certain scenes, like one in a labyrinth, for example, could have been stretched out for tension, and the book, for me at least, could have used a bit more sexual tension between the two characters. Both profess their care for one another, but we don't really get any pining per se, and I didn't really feel the sort of like electric tension between them that I was hoping for. The last book kind of had more of that almost, and the characters barely talked to one another in that one. And I was kind of like, oh, it feels like we've jumped. I mean, there was a time jump, but I felt like their relationship did a jump and I was like, I would have loved to see that actually kind of develop a bit more and had a bit more kind of, you know, will they, won't they to it as opposed to just, I love her. I love her. I'm like, okay, give me some, give me something else. <laughs> Again, I think there just wasn't space for it. I think if the, yeah, the book had been a bit longer, we could have had a bit more of that. I will say though, overall, the overall, like these are minor things. I really, really enjoyed reading it. You do need to read the first book before this, but they're short, as short as this one. So you could just read them both probably. I think I read this one in like one sitting. Uh, yeah, you totally should check out the Fireborn Blade and this one after it. As I said, these covers are so cool. Uh, yeah, thank you again to Tor.com for my, um, my copy. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thanks.